Hello, Luke Malevich here with the newly rebranded Trombone World. And today we're going to talk about the differences between the three most common types of trombones. Before we get started, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. And also don't forget to share the videos with anybody that you think is going to find them helpful. So let's jump right into it. We have our small bore tenor trombone, we have our large bore symphonic tenor, and here we have our bass trombone. Now let's talk about bore sizes. So what that word means, what a bore size is, is basically the size of the inner tubes here. So between these three different instruments, they're going to have different bore sizes. And the way that they're written, if you look online, if you're purchasing an instrument, it'll say point, and then the number of the bore size. So for example, this is a 508. So it would say 0.508 inches, which is the size of the, the bore. But for our purposes, and whenever you hear somebody talk about bore sizes, they'll usually just say the number. So for example, they'll just say 508 versus telling you it's 0.508. Just kind of assume that people know what it, what it means. Uh, 508 sits at the at kind of the end of the small small bore tenor trombones. So you'll have 508 underneath that you'll have 500, maybe a 490, 484, and those are kind of the, the main categories. Although there are variations and different manufacturers will have something slightly different. You might have a 510. Jumping ahead with the large bore symphonic tenor, uh, generally it's going to be a 547 bore. And you're going to see that with almost all of them, whenever you're looking online for, for a large bore symphonic tenor, you're going to see that most of them are 547. With the bass drum one over here, it's going to be generally 563. Although again, there are variations in different sizes between different manufacturers, but it's kind of the, the standard size. Jumping right back here, we have different bell sizes across all the instruments with the uh, small bore trombone. This is an eight inch bell. You might have a seven and a half inch bell, seven and three quarters, but generally between seven and a half and eight inches is what, you, what you're gonna see on the, on the small bore trombones. On our large bore tenor here, we have an eight and a half inch bell, which generally is pretty standard. Now with the bass trombone, we have a nine and a half inch bell here, and that's generally the most common and most standard bell size used now. Although if you have an older style instrument or you end up purchasing a used model for your child that's a little bit older, it might have a 10 inch bell or 10 and a half inches, but the most common one these days is nine and a half. And it's also the easiest one to find a case for if you wanted to buy a, an aftermarket case that may be perhaps a little bit lighter than what the instrument, the case that the instrument came with, it's gonna be easier for you to find that if you have a standard bass drum one with a nine and a half inch bell. Let's jump back to, to the small board and talk about mouthpiece sizes. Now, what the small board trombone has is a small shank receiver here. What the large symphonic tenor has is a large bore receiver as well as the bass trombone. It's the same size receiver on both. Just kind of show you the, the differences in the ends of the mouthpieces here. You can see with the small tenor, it's a much smaller size of mouthpiece than with the large symphonic tenor. And the bass trombone will have the same large receiver just like the symphonic tenor, which also means that you have to be careful when buying mouthpieces because you sometimes, without knowing, you might run the risk of having a bass trombone with a tenor trombone mouthpiece, which won't, won't allow the instrument to be played as well as it could. I've had students of mine come in where they borrowed the bass trombone from, from their school and they came in with a bass trombone but with a mouthpiece from a large tenor. And with that, the bass trombone doesn't play as well as it could, and vice versa. If you take the bass trombone mouthpiece and use it on the large tenor, it again won't work properly because you know bass trombone mouthpieces, even though they'll fit, they're designed to be played with a much larger bore instrument. Again, you know, this is a 547, this is a 563, bigger bore, more air. So you just have to be careful with the, with the mouthpiece choice. Again, with a small, small tenor, it's you know, less, of, less of a risk because only a small shank mouthpiece will fit. Now let's talk about the applications of the different instruments here. With the small bore tenor trombones, you're going to likely encounter those in, in jazz bands and rock bands, funk bands, what we call kind of commercial music. You know, in a high school setting, you know, oftentimes these are the instruments that are preferred in a jazz band because 
it's a smaller bore, it's a smaller bell size. The instrument could be a little bit brighter, it can project a little bit more, and it fits more with that style of music. With our, as the name suggests, with our large symphonic tenor trombone, you're gonna encounter those more in orchestras, in concert bands, various different classical styles. Although there are variations in different places where you can use the instruments, that's primarily where you're gonna see them. And oftentimes when a director wants a student to go from a trombone like this, a small board tenor, to one with a trigger or a large symphonic tenor, it's because they want a sound that'll fit more with an orchestra and fit more with a concert band. And with our bass trombone here, it's a little bit more versatile where you'll encounter bass trombones in jazz band, you'll, you're gonna see them in concert band, you're gonna see bass trombones in orchestras, just any, basically anything that's written for bass trombone, you'll use a bass trombone for, for that. There are certain models and makes that kind of lean more towards one style of music or the next. So you can have a trombone that bass trombone that'll fit a little bit more with a jazz band, one that'll fit a little bit more with an orchestra, but at the you know, at the high school level especially, and you know, even oftentimes at the professional level, you can have a bass trombone that'll kind of fit wherever you need it to fit. They're really good uh, with their sound to be able to do that. Now with that said, there's one more category that I haven't talked about that's not represented here, and that's the medium board. Now, as the name suggests, it sits between the small and the large, whereas the small, this is a 508 again, 547, a medium bore will be just about 525. With those instruments, sometimes you'll see them with an eight inch bell, sometimes an eight, eight and a half inch bell, sometimes no trigger, sometimes with a trigger, and again, sometimes they'll have a small shank receiver, sometimes they'll have a large shank receiver. So you're gonna have to be careful, because it can be almost anything depending on the manufacturer. And there, again, it's kind of sit in the middle. Uh, the sound's not quite as compact and doesn't project as much as a small bore. It's but it's you know not as big as a large board, so you can use them in jazz band, you can use them in concert band. Uh, sometimes I'll suggest those to high school students. I'm gonna get one instrument and they can kind of use it use it for a little bit of both. Now next, let's talk about uh, the, the triggers and the different things that the instruments can and cannot do. Starting with the small board trombone here. So what I'm gonna do now is play an E, a low E out in seventh position. And now what happens, the next available note is a pedal B flat. So between E and B flat, there are five notes that this instrument cannot access. Just because of the size of the tubing, there's nothing in between a low E and a pedal B flat. If you're, you know, if you're playing this, particularly in jazz band, if you're playing rock music, funk music, you won't have to worry about playing those notes anyway. They're, they won't be written for the instrument. What happens when we move to our symphonic tenor trombone, we have this little trigger mechanism here. Now what this does is it puts the instrument in the key of F. So if I'm gonna play my low B flat and hit a trigger, I'm gonna play the note F. I'm gonna do that one more time. And in addition, what this allows us to do, it gives us access to a few of the notes that the small board tenor didn't give us access to, as well as it allows us to play certain notes in different positions. For example, I can play my C and B in sixth and seventh position. But I can also play them with a trigger in first and second. which makes it a little bit easier, so you don't have to really go between you know, first and sixth and first and seventh position. You can use the trigger. And the same thing for our F and E. You can play them in first and second. Now I can also play an E flat, a D, a D flat, and a C. There's still a B natural, which 
You cannot play on this instrument. With the trigger, you have access to four of the five notes that the small war didn't have access to. So you have access to your E flat, your D, your D flat, and your C. Now, when we jump to the bass drum on here, what you'll notice is the addition of a second trigger. So the first one, just like before, I'm operating with my thumb. And then the second trigger here, I'm going to op operate with my middle finger. The first trigger is exactly the same as it was on the large board tenor, where it puts the instrument in the key of F. The second trigger here is called the G flat trigger. It'll allow me to play the note G flat in first position. Now if I press them both together, it's going to put me in D, which allows me to play the note D in first position. Now with both triggers pressed, it also gives me access to the low B that I couldn't access on any of the other horns. So now with the bass trombone, I have a full range in that register with E flat, D, D flat, C, and B. And oftentimes for bass trombone particularly, you're gonna see that low B being written and you do need both triggers to play that note. Now if you noticed, I can operate either, either trigger by itself or both of them together. That's called an independent setup, meaning that both triggers operate independently of each other. You can use both of them together or each one of them individually, which gives us lots of different options for playing notes. There are trombones that have a dependent setup, which means that the second trigger won't operate until you press the first. So pressing it by itself won't do anything. You have to have the first trigger pressed in order for the second one to work, which means that you have just you know, a few less options since you can't play the G flat trigger by itself. And again, that's a dependent setup. It's a lot less common, but you do still see it every so often. And you can kind of tell by how the valves are arranged. If they're on top of each other like this, more than likely it's an independent setup and then you can use each of the triggers individually. So you can always ask if you're if you're getting a bass drum from a director or you know if you're purchasing one that you're purchasing an independent trombone, independent style bass trombone, they're they're again just more options to use and they're a little bit more or more common. Before I finish up here, there's one more category that I'm just going to mention that you might see it as well is the the valve trombone which if you're a euphonium player particularly and you're interested in jazz, playing, playing in the jazz band, if there's a valve trombone available at the school, oftentimes the director will have you play the valve trombone. It's an easy switch. Obviously, there, there'll be no slide. It's just going to be valves. It's going to be very similar to playing, playing euphonium or baritone. You might encounter that as well. If you have any questions for me, you can please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can also email me at uh, tromboneworldchannel at gmail.com. Always happy to answer any questions and help anybody out. Please feel free to share the video with anybody that you think is going to find it helpful. So hopefully they explain all the differences between our small bore trombone, our large bore symphonic tenor trombone, and the bass trombone. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.